Welcome to the My Amazon Guy podcast. Anthony, I appreciate you coming on. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So, so Anthony is the industry liaison for PickFu, uh, and he has been on the podcast circuit. He's well known for his presentations, and the reason I know this is because he gave a phenomenal presentation on the Helium 10 Elite, and that's, that's why I tracked this guy down. I really want to talk to him today because this dude knows how to make your conversion rates go up. So, uh, so Anthony, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, how, to, how to grow your sales on Amazon. And, and the idea that we floated before we hit the record button was uh, to, to test an agency motto. Um, and, and so what we're going to do on this particular podcast, and it's just like we would test like a photo with PicFu or you test a title. We're going to like, we're going in cold. Like, how do we do this together? So that way, if you haven't heard of PicFu before, you need, you need to test them out, right? Like you, you got to go check them out. Like they're highly recommended. They've, they've been referred to in my podcast at least five or six times in the last few months. Uh, so you got to go check them out. All right. So, so Anthony, um, before we dive into this and go cold and like how we do A-B testing, can you tell us a little bit about your background and PickFu? Sorry, I just lost you there for one second. Say, say that. No, no, no problem. So uh, before we dive into our testing methodology, tell me a little bit about your, your background and PickFu. Sure. So my background is, is kind of a long story. I actually started out working uh, at Amazon. That was the start of my professional career. So I worked in fulfillment center operations, uh, starting out in Tampa and also in Houston. And uh, so I got to see the inside of the FC. I got to handle uh, a lot of cases related to my specific role was in loss prevention. So I got to deal with uh, people stealing inventory on the inside, got trained on how to interrogate people. I also got to Jeez. deal with levels of higher level uh, vendor fraud. So uh, some really interesting stuff. I worked at Amazon for about a year and no, nobody ever steals anything at a fulfillment center, right? Like never. Yeah, right. You would think so, right? But uh, in, in these things are packed, just jam packed with cameras. Um, but people do steal. It's, you know, if you're, and it makes sense, right? If you're making $15 an hour, you're like packing expensive items all day. By default, if you have a few thousand workers there, people are going to say, hey, like, what would it be like if I just take this iPhone with me? So uh, that actually happens a good bit. Uh, and we had to, you know, deal with that. So that was a, a whole a whole fun thing. Um, really enjoyed my job at Amazon. I don't have anything negative to say about the company. And I'm not just saying that I thought it was an awesome place to work. But after the, being there for about a year, I had an opportunity from a good friend of mine that I knew from college that actually taught me how to sell on Amazon. Uh, he said, Hey, why don't you quit your job at Amazon, help move out to the Philippines and help me scale this creative agency. And so I thought, this is crazy. This doesn't make any <laughs> Call sense. Me maybe. I knew I'd regret it. Yeah, I knew I'd regret it if I if I didn't do it. So I, I put in my two weeks notice, moved out to the Philippines and helped uh, build an agency uh, specifically around conversion optimization. We scaled that for about two years. And then again, just crazy industry that we're in, got an opportunity to exit that business. And we were acquired by a private equity company, uh, which are becoming more and more big now, these FBA roll-up strategies. And so uh, after that, PicFu was a company that we had integrated heavily into that uh, conversion optimization agency. We were using it primar primarily for testing main images for our clients. And so I had met Justin and John at a conference in, in, in Vegas at Prosper Show. And so I pitched them about coming on to PicFu and helping to get the word out there about split testing and you know using the tool more around the industry. Pro Prosper Show is one of the best Amazon conferences of the year, without a doubt. Um, so when that thing happens again, people need to show up to that. But in the meantime, listen to the podcast. All right. Absolutely. So, so Anthony, you got an incredible background, very interesting backstory. And, and so if you had to summarize PicFu in one sentence, what would you say? Sure. It's very simply stated. PicFu is DIY market research. I think we're going to show an example of just how quick and easy it is. But, you know, when, when big brands are taking a product to market or they're trying to get feedback on their creative assets, you know, they're not just going with their gut, right? They're not just, they're not asking their partner, their spouse, like, Hey, what do you think about my packaging? They're taking a more serious approach than that. And so PicFu was started completely on that concept of, okay, where do, where do smaller companies go to get feedback? And if they just want to get 
feedback from real people from a real audience, or if you're not your target market, like if the product that you're selling to, if you're not that target customer and you actually don't know much about what they're looking for, PickFu is a really easy way where you can upload just about anything into our platform and get real feedback from real people in usually under an hour. Well, I, I think that's incredible. So we're going to put that to the test today. All right. So um, we had floated, I had floated selfishly, I had floated the idea of like, am I saying the right thing about my agency uh, when, when I talk to people? And so we're going to run, we're going to run a live AB test and I don't know if we're going to get the results quick enough, but I'll, I'll shoot a, I'll shoot an update outro before we post the podcast, if that happens. So the thing we're going to AB test is um, kind of like the, the, my Amazon guy motto. And so the A is going to be, we grow sales and the B we haven't figured out yet. So we're going to, we're going to talk through this as quickly as we can come up with a B, throw this up and then walk through the pick foo AB testing. So, Anthony, if I told you my Amazon guy is uh, an agency with 40 people, more than 100 clients, and we help people grow their sales through two ways, traffic improvements, SEO and PPC, and conversion improvements uh, through design, creative, uh, catalog management, merchandising products. I'm going I'm to put you on the spot. Do you have a B version for me? <laughs> yeah. So let me start out. I'll, I'll share my screen real quick. And I'll pull up the interface and I'll, I'll just play around with some different ideas while we start here. So this is a pretty common use case, right? People using PickFu to get some feedback on a different slogan or a tagline for their brand. So the good news is PickFu isn't always just, hey, I actually, you know, it's not necessarily about testing even an alternate option. Sometimes it can just be a sanity check on, hey, is the slogan that I'm thinking of, is this really good or have I missed something fundamental here? So what I'm going to do, I'm signed into my PickFu corporate account right now, but you'd see pretty much the same thing for anyone on the website. You're just going to start off and click new poll. That's what we're going to do today. Um, I guess what, what I'm thinking is like, you know, so we've got the, the two options. I think we should try to test more than one option today, even if deep down, you know, that we grow sales is what, you know, that's your that's gut what feeling, I think. right? You're, you're, yeah, that's what I think, but, but I, and your gut feeling might be right on this. You know, a lot of the times our gut feeling is right, but let's try to come up with something else. I'm going to say, yeah. um, you know, so we grow sales. You can upload an image, right? You can put in text. If we had a logo we wanted to try, maybe it was like, it was like your, your company name. And then you had the, the tagline underneath it. You could pretty much put any creative type or any creative asset you wanted in here. I'm going to put in a little bit of context for the question. So I'm going to say, which tagline do you prefer for this? Uh, I like to give a little bit of context. So I'm going to say just simply for the panel, like Amazon, or maybe we'll, we could just call it a marketing agency. But like, if we wanted to go into a little bit more detail, maybe we'd say an Amazon marketing agency. Let, let's go ahead and a, say, yeah, let's go ahead and say Amazon marketing agency. Okay. All right. So, so, so yeah, so I just like to give a little bit of context to kind of ask what is the thing that we're talking about here? So which tagline do you prefer for this Amazon marketing agency? So we've got we grow sales. You know, I'm just going to come up with some, I'm just going to type in some extra ones and we can decide what we want. So like grow sales faster. Um, I, one of the ideas I came up with was just simply saying seller central agency, but I, but I assume some of our public are not going to understand what that means. Yeah, probably won't. Uh, but that's probably going to come back in the feedback as well. Kind of, you know, seller central agency. What is that? You know, and maybe we just come up with another one. It's and like the, the most popular keyword in the space on YouTube is Amazon FBA. So yes. I bet people would understand that one. Um, so maybe, maybe a combination of Amazon FBA growth or Amazon FBA something. Yeah. So we've got, we grow sales. So, okay. So which tagline do you prefer for this Amazon marketing agency? We've got re, we grow sales, grow sale faster, seller central agency. Now, the other thing that I could do as well is I could say, what's the name of the agency? My Amazon guy. So what we could also do here is we could say my Amazon guy. We grow sales. Like, yeah. Put the name of the agency next to all the taglines. You know, that way it gets a little bit of uh, a little bit of context there. Plus it's going to, you know, this is a real world scenario too, because you'd have the logo and you probably have the tagline underneath. 
if we really wanted to do a different test and maybe what we could do, Stephen, is I can give you a credit. So if you want to, you know, shoot something afterwards, maybe you have a graphics team just spin up the logo and then the little thing beneath. And then we go back and do a second test after this and just see what kind of stuff we're getting here. So which tagline do you prefer for this, for this Amazon marketing agency? My Amazon guy, we grow sales. My Amazon guy grows sales faster. My Amazon guy, seller central agency, my Amazon guy, Amazon FBA growth. So th I think this is pretty clear. Like we're, okay. we're this is like the agency name, grow sales faster. Let's, let's roll with it. Just, just because I know we need to get some time on the test. Let's roll with what we've got. And then we'll talk through like typical questions and how people think through this. Cool. So what we could do here is we got a general audience. I, I want to see for the targeting audience if we have, bam. So what we're going to do here, I've just- Side hustles. Do. Love that term, by the way. Anybody right, selling so, on Amazon's got a side hustle when it starts. Right. So, so this is going to, I'm, I'm just doing this to show the audience that we can do this. But if I was, if I was asking this group, it might take a little bit longer to, for this test to complete, but that's fine. I've selected that we're going to get 50 people who are either small business owner or they have side hustles, right? So this is, this is going to be a good little group. And uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to do here. I'm just going to, you know, you, you can, you can pick a, you pick your audience targeting. That's pretty much what, what you do. If you're picking to a product category, you might say, Hey, I want females that are wine drinker age 35 plus, right? So whatever you want, we pretty much have it all here. A whole well, bunch of different traits. We'll come back to that wine glass mention. I own Momster, which is a wine glass company. I have the number one funny wine glass on Amazon. And, and so one of the, one of the questions that came up when we were trying to debate, like, what would we test for Momster? It was with wine or without wine. So I bet you've, I bet you've run that test before on this platform. I bet it's been done. Yeah, probably has. Um, okay, so this is, this is running. This is collecting data. This is just going to run in the background. What I really, really like about PickFu, this is a feature we added up here in the top. You've got on your tab. This is just going to update. So like zero as, the, as these results come in. And so I'm very impatient. Uh, you're I'll, you're I'll refreshing refresh. the page. <laughs> yeah, and the cool thing is you don't even need to refresh it. It'll come here once we start getting some responses. And you know, I'll drop, drop them down in automatically. So we'll just let that simmer in the background. Uh, I do want to know our panel's all based in the US. So it's a, it's like maybe 9 p.m. Uh, on the East Coast right now, but uh, we still should get some responses pretty quick. So yeah, we'll just let that go. That's, that's okay. So that, first of all, this platform is just really cool to begin with. Um, I first met Justin probably two years ago, by the way. Um, and uh, I, was, I was really intrigued back then. Um, and, and so it's, it's a really interesting platform to figure out like what, what you can do to grow. Now, um, Amazon as a platform has really come a long way, right? Like, like back in the day, you could just show up, right? If you just showed yeah. up, you're going to make money. Like, like I've been doing Amazon beta advertising for, I, I don't even know how long. Like I, I was selling rice cookers for two cents a click PPC style with zero reviews and crushing it, right? So like, but nowadays it's like, man, you got to spend lots of money on your advertising. So if you don't have something right, uh, and, and we just, we just saw that that particular test would normally cost like hundred, hundred bucks. Right. And, and only because we used like a niche audience, like your typical test is like a dollar. 50 a bucks. Yeah. yeah. 50. Um, that's pretty freaking cheap to figure out some data. So, um, all right. So, so walk me through like a couple of like the most surprising or interesting things you've learned in running some of these tests. Like what have you guys found? Yeah. So the, the biggest thing that I've seen is, is running PickFu tests, especially at scale. You know, the, the real correct way to use PickFu isn't just from doing one test and then saying, okay, we're done here. It's going through more of like an iterative process. And what's really interesting and unique about PickFu is because you're getting feedback points from so many different people. Like even with this test that we just ran, we have a pretty good idea of what tagline and slogan is the best. So I'm not really looking so much to see which one wins. I'm looking to see much more, what are the random kind of out of the box, innovative ideas, things that I wouldn't even thought of, right? And then you, you, these little kind of things that you had never really anticipated to come through, you're like, whoa, I, I never saw something like this. Or when you're trying to choose between multiple creative options that are all good, you're looking at, you're, you look at it and you're like, oh, of course, this is why they prefer this package, but your brain almost doesn't process it at that granular of a level or you're too close to the product. So yeah, I mean, we, we see stuff all the time. I, I, I guess I can't run into like too many specific examples of, uh, you know, individual client stuff that we're getting up. We have like some, 
some public case studies that we have, like with Thrasio, and they were using Picfu to optimize their product packaging for a brand they acquired, Angry Orange. And they just like made a whole bunch of packaging iterations. And then this brand they acquired for $2 million, they went through a bunch of packaging changes and the final design, once they uploaded it, they pretty much grew that brand overnight from two to $20 million. Like, so, I mean, there's a lot of really good work that you can I, do with the product. I think, I think that's worth bearing a little bit more weight behind your statement there. They took it from how much? Yeah, from $2 million when they acquired the brand, they changed the product packaging using PicFu, and then they grew that brand almost right away to $20 million. And, and And obviously, they probably did a bunch of other stuff too, but like the packaging was the main thing. Like they it's so that's pretty incredible. Um, when I watched your Helium 10 Elite presentation, um, you talked a little bit about like the words that were emphasized on the packaging. Could you, t- could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. And so th- that's like one of the biggest takeaways that we see, right? After you start running enough tests, you start to see these consistent trends. And it's really helpful for putting together these presentations because I can come up with really clear and straightforward best practices. And one of the best practices that we see on product packaging time and time again, it might not work in a retail world, but it works very well in e-commerce and that is putting front and center on the packaging, what is the product? And so this was a, a big application of, and a big lesson learned from the Thrasio case study is that they were selling this pet deodorizer, right? So like, how do you show what a pet deodorizer is? And so in the old product packaging, their brand name, Angry Orange was very, very big, almost taking up the whole front of the packaging. And the feedback that came through in the PicFu tests is that people didn't care to see the brand name Angry Orange, what they cared to see big front and center was the words pet deodorizer. And then a little picture of a dog and a cat because it was, you know, for dog and cat smells. Yeah. So when your brain sees that from the first page of search results, it's the first thing, even before you can on a conscious level, realize what you're looking at, your brain realizes pet deodorizer. This is for a dog and a cat. This is the one I'm going to click into. And it's like when you are, sh- when you're shopping, right? These people, they're shopping in a distracted environment. You don't have a captive audience. And so where we really find the biggest gains is like, in the same thing with your tagline today, how can I just make it as simple as possible for the brain to like absorb the correct messaging? And so that they on a subconscious level are just like, okay, my Amazon guy, here's how it's going to help me. You know what I mean? That makes, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, the, the subconscious level that we're talking about right now, like that's, it's really abstract. It's really hard to like understand that, but like, I understand what you're saying. But like, can you impact that a little bit for me? So like when, when people are scrolling through the countless thousands of products on Amazon, tell me a little bit more about how you've seen that subconscious come out. Yeah, sure. So first and foremost, I'd say there's, there's a few different areas where you're going to get the biggest impact and where this kind of subconscious thinking really plays the biggest part. First and foremost, in terms of main image click through rate, right? how can you make your main image very clearly show what is the product, right? Show the product in use, have some props that are going to stand out, guide people's eyes towards the listing, right? And so again, whether the, with the Thrasio example, it's like your product packaging front and center saying pet deodorizer. Um, I think in the helium 10, uh, in the helium 10 presentation, I gave the example of a reusable grocery bag, the eco-friendly ones. And instead of just showing the bags on a white background that were empty, showing them filled with the produce, right? Allowing the brain to visualize what's going on. Um, When you're actually inside of the listing, I think it really comes down to your image set. And so what can you do as people click through the images in your image gallery, kind of like a slideshow, how can I have infographics that are not busy? They're very simple and they just have every single graphic has one point. And so we kind of call it the five second test, right? If you were to show an infographic to someone who has no knowledge of the product. I love the five it. second test. I'm so, like, I didn't make that up. You didn't make that up, but like we are on the same wavelength. Five second test, litmus test, bright line. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. I just got, you got me pumped up. Yeah, no, it's, it's super cool. Right. Think, and I think a lot of sellers get this wrong because they try to jam pack so much information into their infographics or into their A plus, And they forget that, you know, the people aren't there to watch a presentation, right? They're there to just find, is this what I'm looking for? Yes or no. And if the answer is no, they're going to bounce. And so the five second test is like, if I show an infographic to someone for five seconds, I take it away and say, what was the point of that infographic? If they don't recite it back exactly what you're thinking, like there's probably too much information and they're not going to absorb it. And so you're really trying to leverage, like what's that fine line of sending just enough information that's relevant. That's not going to overwhelm them uh, and get them to actually, okay, before they're going to buy the product, their brain has to check off maybe a few check boxes, right? And you just have to guide them through that checklist. And if you get them to check all of those boxes, 
it's it's not it's not rocket science. They're going to convert as a customer. If you don't check the boxes, the default is they'll bounce and they'll find someone else who does check the boxes. So let, let's talk about check boxes then. So you know we've obviously given a couple of real world examples on like what we could test, right? Well, go ahead and go ahead and give me the gauntlet. Like name everything you possibly could test as quickly as you can because I know there's a lot. Yeah. On PicFu. Yeah. So starting with main images is is a big one test main images for for clarity if it's very clear about what people are going to get uh from that first page of search results you can test your title uh the 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 product research tools you're using might tell you which words should be included but just changing the order of those words can really make a big deal uh the placement of words can be a big deal so you've got yeah main image title getting into the listing everything coming down to your image gallery so your secondary image on uh for infographics is a good one uh, a really unique out of the box one that we've seen is for pre-creative testing on lifestyle images so let's say you're about to go in to do a lifestyle shoot before you go in to do the lifestyle shoot we actually saw this in a case study we did with kevin king uh we had agencies competing to make a listing for kevin king and they before they went into their lifestyle shoot they uploaded a few different stock images to see which stock image is best going to uh click and then they went to try to replicate that stock image and had some really cool results. So that's, pre creative testing. That's interesting. I never would have thought of this one. This is really, so they use stock photos to AB test before they went and shot it. Yeah. And then the wow. lifestyle images they came back with were just really kick ass. They looked really, really good. Not, not only did they look really good, but they knew it was for a, and we'll, we have this case study coming out uh, next month. Um, but it was for a travel hand sanitizer. So they were trying all these different scenarios of like, where are you most likely to use it? Like in a grocery store, like pulling it out of your purse inside of luggage. And so we, they got the one that was like, oh, this one is the one people want to see. And they didn't waste the, their time shooting all these other scenes. They just really nailed the scenario that everyone could relate to. Um, that, make, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So image testing is a big one. Pre-creative testing. Um, video is, is huge, right? You can test multiple do, versions of- Do you know a, a video animator that I could hire, by the way? I need to hire a video animator. You know, everyone always asks for these video leads. Animators, I don't know too many. Okay. Um, All right. But, Anybody listening to this podcast, if you, if you are an animator and you're looking for a job, send your email, your resume to jobs at myamazonguy.com. I want to talk to you. Hit them up. Um, yeah, so videos are, videos are a good one. Uh, you can test your hook. You can test your call to action. Um, and then I, I guess- you know, from there, like a, a, the last one I'll really say is just really good for e-commerce is if you're launching a product, right? Or maybe you're selling in an existing category, go and see what your competitors are doing. What I like to do is download their images, upload them into PicFu and see what are the competitors doing well? What are they not doing well? And how can I learn from that as I'm going through my creative process? I, that last part, uh, I never would have thought of doing. Like when you say things, Anthony, like in your presentations and in my pod, like I'm like, oh my gosh, this is common sense, of course, right? But like, I didn't think of that. Right. So like uh, I'm having one of these moments where where like a guy is selling uh, hummus ice cream. Right. And he, and he takes it to a, he takes it to his food presentation conference and people are like they come to his desk and they look at it and they look at him and they're like, what do I do with it? And the guy's like after like the 17th time being asked this question, he's just like, you effing eat it. Right. Like you have an idiot. And, and, I'm, and I'm having one of those moments right now because I'm like man, there's so many things you could, you could, you could learn more about. Like I never would have thought about testing my competitors products or going and using stock photos. What incredible ideas. Yeah, th there's definitely a lot of applications and that's a, that's kind of the reason why I, I pitched to come on PicFu is because I was using that my agency for a very narrow use case, which, which was just for main images. And I thought this is Pandora's box in terms of uh, really the applications. And that's kind of what, what, what we get to work on is, is, figuring out all the, all the great use cases. We also use it, people crowdsourcing their products. And so like people on Indiegogo and Kickstarter using PicFu to determine what their backer levels should be, what the rewards should be, like all sorts of crazy stuff. I, I'm, I'm going to have to test you for some YouTube thumbnails to see what will convert the best. That's we're we're trying, we, I've been trying to get some people who are on YouTube to try, test their thumbnails. The thing is everyone's so busy. And so like as a yeah. business owner, there's always that laundry list of things you'd like to do. And so if you want to test some thumbnails, I'd love to give you some, some tests. That, and, that'd know, be great. So, so I just hired uh, customthumbnails.com and uh, I am, putting significant effort into upping my own presentation. So like I just bought, um, so I've, I've been butting up with Adam Heist. Adam Heist is the number one YouTube channel followed after somebody views my content, they view Adam's. And so like nice. Adam sent me his setup, his rig. Like I, you know, my backdrop right here, this has been like, this is brand new, right? Like I am really upping my game. So 
now that I'm putting this money in, I'm going to have to run some tests. Like I'm going to have, like, I got to know, right? Like I'm putting yeah. this effort in. So, uh, and, and people that are, you know, thinking about their own products at Amazon, you got to be doing the same thing, guys. I'm telling you, like you got to, once you're putting significant expenditures into it, it makes a lot of sense to get some Intel instead of just running by your gut. Like you got, you got to get some hard data Intel. All right. So, all right. So let's talk about aggregators. Uh, we've seen a massive amount of aggregators come into the space where they buy up a bunch of Amazon brands. You mentioned one of them, Thrasio. Uh, I, I assume that you're probably getting a lot of testing coming from aggregators. Is there, is there a trend there? Aggregators are changing the business for sure. Uh, I think probably in a lot of positive ways because they're just making the industry move in a direction that would have happened eventually, but it's happening much at a faster pace than, than anything else. Um, I think it's good because it brings a lot of legitimacy to the industry as well. It also brings a lot of competition. The aggregators are definitely using PickFu heavily. Um, what is kind of I'm seeing, and I've been seeing this trend for, for a while now, for almost a couple of years is that, I mean, this isn't anything new. How brands are successful on Amazon now is from creating a really convincing, really good brand. And so basically what we're seeing is that the level of creative output is just going up and up and up on, on Amazon. And so they're changing the game. Like even this Thrasio example we talked about with Angry Orange, the pet deodorizer, they just, I mean, so they use pick food to optimize their packaging. But then once they had that, brand growth. They didn't just stop and say, we're cool with $20 million. They doubled down and they kept going. So they just released a, a video advertisement and they had no joke. They had Snoop Dogg in it. Like, I mean, it's wow. just going to the whole next level. And so what I think we're starting to see is this real beginning of, um, you know, we've seen companies like Anchor that have been really successful on Amazon. You're going to start to see more and more brands that started on FBA rise to the level of national and international brands and how they're going to do it isn't from making these crazy new products. It's going to be the same products, but with really, really marketing. creative. Yeah. Marketing. Yeah. That's, that makes perfect sense. Well, um, I have, I have my own hidden list of aggregators. And if you're an aggregator listening to this, I also want to talk to you because uh, we know that the dirty work that aggregators have to go through, they, they need to rely upon partners like PickFu. And um, so we're, we're positioning my Amazon guy to try and chase some of these aggregators mm -hmm. down. So uh, they'll be hearing from me one way or another, but uh, <clears throat> all right. So, uh, I'm going to give you the last, last word here, Anthony. Uh, what, what, uh, what's something that somebody can do besides testing their product uh, to grow their sales in, in, in an hour of effort today that you would recommend? It's a good question. I think if you want to grow your sales probably in the fastest way, Man, in just an hour. Yeah, I think probably if you want to grow your sales in the fastest way would be to like take a hard look at where you're spending your money in terms of advertising, in terms of pay-per-click and be really, you know, really drill into, into that category. I think a lot of people might be just pushing a lot of volume to their listings and it's not necessarily as relevant volume. That's probably the biggest low hanging fruit. Beyond that, it's going to take more than an hour, but take a really, really strong look at what your conversion rate is. And so I think what I like to do is outline what are normal conversion rates, like a baseline of at least eight to 10%, you know, 20% for good. And then a 40 plus percent for a great conversion rate. Like if your listings are and they're a mature listing, if they're not converting in like the, you know, 30, 40% range, there is a possibility for them to be doing that. And if they're not, it probably has to do with something in the creative and something about the messaging and the listing that's getting lost and people are bouncing. So so, yeah, that's, that's so I just put out a, a, a 40 minute in-depth guide about this product. This is the number one funny wine glass on Amazon and it has nice. a 42% conversion rate. And uh, awesome. I wouldn't say this is an exceptionally good looking listing. Uh, but uh, if you, you know, putting you on the spot here, uh, what, what is one thing that you think this listing has done well? And what's one thing that you think it could improve based on your yeah, test? So so I like it because it's simple. It's got a lot of good reviews and the price is, is right. Um, I think if you wanted to maybe take it to the next level, it looks like, I, I can't tell if I'm, if I'm hundred percent sure on this, but it looks like when I'm looking at the glass that these are, um, I don't know if it's actually the real glass that's been photographed. It looks like it's kind of, uh, totally on photoshopped. Here. You nailed it. Yeah. I, I, so, I, can't, I can't put the wool over your eyes. You've seen it all. So 
Yeah. What I would, if I really want to, if I wanted to like, if I, if I wanted to just make this look really a much, much better, especially for a product that's selling well. And I wanted to do this very quickly is I would go to a 3d rendering artist and say, Hey, uh, make me a version of this wine glass and make it for me in a 3d render. That way you would have that model and they could put it into whatever kind of environment, whatever kind of stock image they want. And it would look really realistic, look really lifelike. And that way you could put different scenarios of like, Hey, you could do this for a bachelorette party, or you could give this to expecting mothers or, you know, your teacher friends, and then just make the rest of the image gallery, all the gifting applications of, of what this, this product could be used for. Uh, okay. How, how do I, how do I find somebody that can do a 3d render? Hook me up afterwards. Uh, yeah. but I, I recently did a presentation on 3d renders. It comes out a lot in my uh, the talks that I give, there's this guy, his name is Corey Rose from a company called Fade Visuals, okay. uh, a little bit on the expensive side, but does just amazing, amazing renders, sure. really, really good quality work. And uh, if you have product packaging, uh, where they like, if you have, sell a supplement product or, you know, have a product that's like an injection molded plastic item, 3D renders are getting really good. And I think they actually have the potential to look much better than real photography in, in some cases for certain products. And this is probably one where it would look very good. Yeah. Wine glasses and supplements. I could see you working in supplements for sure. Okay. Well, Anthony, I, I think you are just like a walking intelligence, uh, like just, just dripping, right? Like I just, I'm just like drinking from the fire hose right now. And, and I really appreciate you coming on my podcast. Um, if somebody wants to get in touch with you um, or pick food, what should they do? Sure thing. If anytime someone wants to hop on a call, you know, whether it's about pick food or just want to, just want to chat <laughs> Anthony at pickfood.com. Uh, and they can also hit up if they, if they want specific help from our customer success team. We've got a really great customer success manager who runs that team. Her name is Katie, uh, K-A-I-T-Y at pickfood.com. And then I don't know if you still have time, but this test is coming in. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I was trying to be cognizant of your time, but I, yeah, of course I don't want to look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've, I've still got some time left and uh, the offer still stands that if you want to, uh, you know, do a second follow-up test. I'm happy to shoot over a credit. And then All right, let's, let's, let's see. Logo. Let's see. Okay. So, so how many, how many, we got 37 votes in already? Crazy fast, right? It's 9 PM at night. As you can tell here with the tab plus 37, you come here, load 37 new responses. So let's see what we I'm, got. I'm here. really excited to learn. Wow. Yeah, we've, gross sales we've got, faster. Yeah. And we've got seven, seven respondents answering. So what's interesting is like, I come down here, right. And I start to see the breakdown of the votes, right? So we've got gross sales faster. You know, we've got, we grow sales and then we've got these other two here. Now for me, I don't care so much. And let me share this with you because we still have just a few minutes on the, just so you can look through as well. Let me send it in the zoom. Uh, where do we go? Chat. Okay, so I'm gonna send that over to you so you can look through these as well and see if there's anything that stands out. But basically I don't care so much about like, okay, is gross sales faster? Is that actually better? I'm gonna read the responses and see like, okay, why? What are people actually saying here? All right, so there's obviously a lot of intel to look at here. Uh, I'm just gonna read off a couple or you're welcome to and interchange with me here. If it's a tagline you're looking for, then stick with something simple that all audiences can understand. It's all about growing sales. I like we grow. Oh, you skipped that one. Go back up. Uh, uh, so I like that we grow sales. It was, I, I missed where it went, uh, but it, it's blunt and honest. Okay. That's good. I like a choice. I like choice a, cause I feel the tagline is geared towards everyone collectively as a team instead of individuals. All right. He's a team player. Uh, even a person not familiar with Amazon knows we grow sales <laughs> must mean something about helping sellers. Uh, the tagline I prefer for the Amazon marketing agency. First choice is a, because it's very simple. The point B, because it's easy to understand the tagline, but I prefer option A. Third is option C, because it's, it's not as plain and simple as option A. Fourth option D, because FBA is in question. All right. So, so that's interesting. So that, those are all the A answer people. Uh, yeah. So it's it's, it's well, calling to like the B people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and what I want to say as well, too, is like when this gets done, I, I think we're going to see some commonalities and themes, but when the, when the test actually finishes, which is not yet, you can actually click here and you'll get like a word frequency filter. So I think we're going to see some themes like people like it's simple, people like that straightforward. Another thing that I want to say is this was a head to head, I mean, a ranked choice voting poll. So yeah. they actually had to vote as like what their first, One, second, two, three, third four. option was. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. So, so we had 14 people for we grow sales, 22 people for grow sales faster and, 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 Leave it to leave it to the data guy to pick the winning option, right? So like Anthony's the one that came up with this one. 
right? <laughs> like I've, I've, I've been, I've been on uh, like what, 400 sales calls for my agency and I wouldn't have come up with gross sales faster. I would never have come up with that. So there you go, Anthony, you're, you're incredibly, incredibly smart. All right. So taglines on option B and A are really good and are very descriptive and to the point. Uh, B sounds more, more personable. Uh, the options that say that it will help you grow are best, like the consumer can understand it. Uh, so, so, you know, I think this is very informative to people because they can like, like what, what do you do with the tagline? You try and make it easy to understand, make it simple. So. Yeah. And like right here on, on, on response nine, they're saying like, okay, B and A are the best because they don't use jargon, right? Immediately clears what this guy is for. Okay. So, so like, that's interesting feedback. Right. Like we did this in a half hour. We did this in a half hour. This is feedback that's going to change my agency's life in a half hour. Right. Like interesting. All right. So B is a little catchier because uh, it's gross sales faster versus we grow sales. Uh, sounds like the most balanced tagline, in my opinion. No overly pushy or overly confident. Uh, the subtext is important. We'll determine what credibility, if any, scroll down a little bit on option 13 here. Uh, if any, the marketing has the quotation marks, aren't that appealing? Well, we did that just to whatever, uh, B and A are straightforward and concise. C is clever. D is memorable, but most vague. All right. The only one that I will feel fits and flows well with this type of business. Uh, I learned everything I needed from the company from B. Interesting. So grow sales faster. We, we in three words, everything they ever needed to know about me in five seconds. Love that. <laughs> Love that. I like the taglines that talk about growing sales. I don't like the taglines that use acronyms. All right. They don't, they, they didn't know what FBA stand for fulfilled by Amazon. Yeah. And I feel like we're going to see that. We're going to see that a bit like, and, and, and to be fair, these people are obviously outside of the space. Maybe they have a side right. hustle, but not FBA, but probably just good general advice, right? You probably in your tagline wouldn't want to put in an acronym. Which it makes, which would make perfect sense. Right. All right. So, so Anthony, any other take, any other takeaways from you? The only other takeaways I would give, and this is just helpful for using the tool for anyone who's ever using it, is like, you know, we've been curating this panel for almost eight years now. Um, and so we've got these little buttons here, here, helpful or not helpful. And so like, let's say you get to a response because this is a question we get all the time and people are like, this one makes the most sense. And they're like, I think this is a garbage response. You can click not helpful. And that actually help trains our machine learning algorithm. And we actually do remove a lot of people from the panel that just don't put in thoughtful responses. So. I sent this to you. Um, you know, this this is pretty much like let's say, yeah, forty six. Okay, so this is all done now. So, uh, oh no, it's forty six. So I can't count. That's going up to fifty. So almost a, less than an hour. And uh, yeah, it's a cool tool. Give it, give it, a, give it a try. You know, it's it's quick, it's easy, and it's uh, you'll get some, you'll learn something every time. The number one excuse people are going to give is I'm too busy because that's exactly why I haven't engaged your tool enough already. Clearly, right? Like, yeah. Total, total bad on my part. All right. That is the My Amazon Guy podcast. Uh, incredible amounts of content and value coming out of Anthony with PickFu. Go check them out and you will not regret it. Thanks so much for coming on. All right. Really appreciate coming on and best of luck with the launch. I appreciate it.